Good day, everyone, and welcome back to TMAC FPV, your home for your journey to better FPV fun, flights, and racing stuff. In today's video, we're going to show you how to keep this from happening to you. And on another occasion, with a different quad while filming our FPV drone link video, which you can check out through the link up above, I was receiving low signal warnings on my Tyrannus while over water a couple hundred meters from shore. And most recently, while we were filming our smooth micro FPV drone HD video, I was receiving signal critical warnings on my Tyrannus while flying through the trees. These particular instances of low, critical, and lost radio control signals somewhat inspired me to research the use of a 900 megahertz system as opposed to the standard 2.4 gigahertz system. Here's what we found out. So taking a look at the pros, cons, and the science behind these two bands, 900 megahertz and 2.4 gigahertz, we find for the same given power output and receiver sensitivity, using the same antenna gain on both sides factored in, the 900 megahertz band has 2.67 times more range than the 2.4 gigahertz. Or another way of putting it, the 2.4 gigahertz has 8.5 dB more path loss than the 900 megahertz for the same distance. In addition to the 900 megahertz having 2.67 times more range, it also will propagate through obstructions more than the 2.4 gigahertz signals. A lot more, by the way. Obstructions being things that you would fly in and around, like trees, buildings, etc. One con for the 900 megahertz band is that those signals require bigger antenna, have lower data rates, and outside the U.S. are highly regulated. So are these things enough for me to make the switch to 900 megahertz over 2.4 gigahertz? Well, the only other thing I would consider is cost. And after considering cost, the answer is uh, yeah. So we have two 900 megahertz systems available for us. One is the FR Sky R9M module that comes with antenna and also a receiver with the antenna attached to it for $49.99. You can also get the receiver with an antenna attached to it sold separately for $19.99 each, which is comparable to the FR Sky RXSR receiver, which is what I've been using in the, in the past with telemetry. Or you can get the TVS Crossfire module with the antenna for it for $208.99. You'll still need to get another receiver for your quadcopter, in this case the Nano receiver, which is the lowest cost receiver for this, at $29.99. But that Nano receiver doesn't come with an antenna attached to it, so you need to get the Immortal T antenna for an additional $5.95. So a receiver and antenna to go on the receiver comes in at $36 as compared to $20 for the R9 system. And you can get the module and antenna for $209, whereas over here you get the entire package for $50. So which of these two systems do you think I went with? Well, I thought long and hard about it. Actually, I didn't. I went with the R9 system. The link to the R9 module complete system with the receiver and antenna included in the package from ReadyMade RC or RMRC is in the link in the video description below. So to connect the module with the antenna to your Tyrannus, just pull the panel off the back of the Tyrannus. There's some pins down here. That the module connects to. Be careful not to bend the pins. It's that simple. After you flash both the module and your receiver with the same updated firmware, keep in mind the firmware on both the receiver and the module has to be the same in order for them to communicate properly. Then you can go to your model
and under internal RF, you want to change the mode from on to off, or D16, D8, whatever it's on, to off. We want to change that to off. And then under external RF, you want to change it to R9M. And in my case, it's the FCC version. And then you just go ahead and bind it to your receiver. Once again, after both the firmware of the module and the receiver have been updated to the same version, just bind it to your receiver in the normal way you would any other receiver. You can set the RF power to 10, 100, 500. And can you hear the... Uh, buzzing when I set it to 500. Or auto, which is less than or equal to 1 watt. And you can obviously hear the buzzing now. Now what this auto less than or equal to 1 watt means is it's adaptive, so it will go up to 1 watt depending on the conditions which it's, which it's experiencing with regards to RSSI and other factors. It won't exceed 1 watt, but it may actually be transmitting at a lower transmitting power than 1 watt. I'm going to put it back on 100. And really that's all there is to it. Update the firmware on both the module and your receiver. Change those settings in your transmitter and then bind the receiver to the module just as you would any other receiver. Then you're good to go. And here's the R9MM receiver with attached antenna that comes with the R9M module in that package or you can get the uh, receiver and antenna that you see here separately for $19.99. I've included a penny for size comparison and I'll stick my fat thumb in there as a comparison to my thumb. It's very tiny. In fact, it appears to be smaller than the RXSR receiver that I've been using. All you have to do is hook this receiver up the same way you would with the XM Plus or the RXSR uh, receiver and bind it in the same manner, except in this case, to your R9M module. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the performance of the R9M module and this receiver on a quad, and we're going to be using the same flight path as we did in the woods uh, that you saw earlier, so that you can make a comparison with the RSSI of uh, the R9M module and this receiver compared to the previous signal critical of 32 RSSI. Before we get to our flight, I wanted to show the installation of the antenna on the quadcopter. I just zip tied it with a couple zip ties to the arm. What you want to do is keep the antenna as far away from the carbon fiber as possible. Of course, on a micro quad, that's sort of difficult to do. Uh, you also want to keep uh, these at 180 degrees from each other, or in other words, in a straight line. You don't want to bend 190 degrees to another. Uh, this configuration here, as well as a bunch of other tips, are in a document developed by an individual named Justin Kramer. It's the R9M User Guide and Frequently Asked Questions. It's a very valuable document, and I've put the link to it in the video description below for those of you that are interested in grabbing that. And one more thing before we get to our flight. Our comment of the week is from Quad Life. Super interesting content. Got hooked. Keep up flying, man. Well, Quad Life, glad you got hooked. Welcome aboard the TMAC FPV team. And we're going to do some flying right now, Quad Life. It's fly time. A few things to keep in mind for this flight. This is video footage of the CADEX Tarzir FPV camera, not the HD camera. So it should give you a good idea of what the FPV camera video looks like. Secondly, I've set the R9M module power output to 100 milliwatts, which is comparable to the output power of the stock standard Tyrannus without the R9M module. So that should give you a good comparison as well. Keep an eye on the RSSI value in the upper right hand corner of the screen. And when we get to the point in the flight where we were in the video you saw previously 
with the signal critical value RSSI of 32. I'm going to go ahead and freeze this video and show you what the RSSI is at that same point in comparison with the 32 RSSI. Before we continue on with our flight, land on the beach and take a look at our post-flight statistics for the minimum RSSI value which occurred throughout the entire flight. Let's get started. Oh my, middle of the night, fire cast a light on you. I slide a little to the right, just so I'll be next to you. We hope you found this video useful. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Make sure and share it with your friends. If you know of somebody that's interested in getting started with FPV, have them check out our Fast Track FPV course as their clear flight path to FPV fun. Thanks for your time. We'll see you in the next video. Clear skies, friend.